cell arrays are like normal arrays in MATLAB, but you can put other types of things in there instead of just numbers. Okay, so you can do strings and you can do numbers, you could do an array inside there, so you can do many different things inside this cell array. But you just have to have the curly brackets. All right, let's go ahead and just give a couple examples of this. Here's a cell array of strings, and we're just going to go on with our incubator example with chickens. Okay, there's a cell array. I'm going to put a leghorn chicken, a Barnevelder chicken, and a Plymouth Rock chicken in there as well. All right, so I have a cell array, and I can replace this with, um, you know, if I have these types of quotes in Octave, it isn't doesn't change it. In MATLAB, it's just a little bit different. Okay, but there's my array of strings. You can also have an array in a cell array. Okay, there's Leghorn. I'm going to put a true and a 42 in there. And then I could have another name and then also a chicken name. Okay, I can run this, and there I'll see I have my first entry is Leghorn, my second entry is a 1, which is a logical 1, and then uh, two other names. And you can replace the elements of an array or delete a specific value from your cell array. We use the cell string or cell str in MATLAB to convert a string to a cell entry. This is optional for Octave. All right, so I'm going to have some chicken names. And then I'm going to replace, OK, uh, the first one with the name Ancona. All right, and then I can delete the second value as well. All right, so let's just look at this. The first list had these. And then I replaced this one. All right, and then you can see the second one is gone now. Okay, I just deleted it with this. All right, you can also insert values. So here's an array with yes, no, and then we want to insert a maybe in there. Okay, this might be kind of like quantum computing. Instead of yes, no, ones, or zeros, you're going to put something in there that's a maybe. All right. All right, there it is, yes, no, and then I've put in the third one as a maybe. All right, we need to use the cell to mat, cell to matrix function to convert cell array to a matrix. An array is just a 1D uh, matrix. All right, so I'm going to have some chicken names here. And I'll do for i to length of chickens, which is going to be equal to 3. And then I'll display chickens. OK, I'm going to convert that back to a character array, which is a string in MATLAB. All right, so let's go ahead and just run this. And there I'm just going to print out the individual entries as strings. All right, so just like arrays, you can access elements of an array inside a loop, like a for loop or a while loop. The if statement inside controls what message is printed. But if we're going to compare two strings, we've got to use the str cmp for string compare. It's comparing two string values. Otherwise, if they have different lengths, um, it doesn't trim them. It doesn't work really well. So you got to use the str comp. I'm going to have some chicken names here, and then I'm going to display those chicken names. All right, and then I'll do for I to length chickens. And let's just go ahead and get the first chicken name, which is going to be Leghorn. We'll have an if statement. I'm going to compare chicken that I just retrieved to Leghorn. I'm going to try to find the value Leghorn. And then I'm going to replace it with the name Ancona. And then here 
chickens equals I equals uh, cell string and Kona. All right, so let's go ahead and just um, run this. Oops. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. I'll just do display chickens at the end. Okay, so here we go. We re just replace this one and Kona. Okay, so let's go on to our activity now. We want to create a cell array of animal eggs that lays, uh, you know, any animals that lay eggs. Okay, at least three. And I've given you a couple examples here of animals that might lay eggs. We use a while loop with an input to ask the color of the animal uh, egg and store it in a cell array. All right, the while loop should stop uh, if equal to none. Make sure the loop displays the animal in the corresponding colors. You can do the color of the egg or the color of the animal. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to do some animals. I'll come up with a robin, a type of bird that's common in North America, a snake, and a frog. All right, I'm going to have I equals 1, and then I'm going to have just a blank a cell array, which is color. So I just make that with the two curly brackets. And while i is less than or equal to three, I'm gonna go through it three times. I really could have used a for loop here, but instruction said to use a while loop. And then I'm just gonna get a prompt. So I'm gonna take the animal's i, so robin, snake, or frog, and then I'm gonna say, what is the egg color? So it'll be robin, egg color, snake, egg color, frog, egg color. And then I'm going to have an input. So input always assumes a number, unless you follow with a comma s. And in that case, you're telling it, expect a string input. And my colors, I'm going to uh, augment my colors cell array with a new cell string, and that's going to be the color. You can leave off cell string if you're just in octave, but in MATLAB you need it. And then I'm going to increment i equals i plus 1, and then end, and then display the colors. All right, so let's go ahead and just run this. What is a robin egg color? So that one is blue. Snake egg color? Okay, that one, I'll just assume it's green. And a frog egg color? I think that one is clear. All right, so I just stored it in this new color cell array. This next one is just a little bit more complicated. Again, try these before you look at the solutions. But we're going to turn on the TC Lab heater one. Okay, Lab Q1 to 70% and record the time. We're going to use date string getting the current clock. That'll print it out in a human readable time format. The temperature T1 every 20 every second for 20 seconds. We're going to have a total of 20 rows. So we have time and then the value. Put the data into a cell array with the first column as the date time and the second column as the temperature data. We'll save the results to a CSV file with headers time and temperature. Okay, again, tips for MATLAB, you've got to use cell string to convert any string to a cell entry. And in Octave, you don't have to use that. Also, you have to put the curly brackets around any double precision number that you're going to be putting into a cell. But in Octave, you don't have to have that. You can do either one. But let's do this as if you're doing it in MATLAB or Octave. OK, I'm going to clear the lab, connect to the lab, and then I'm going to set the heater equal to 70%. I'm going to create a new store for my values. This is a new cell array. I'm going to go 20 cycles, one second each cycle. So the first thing I want to store is going to be the date string and of the clock. And then I'm going to wrap that in the cell string. Next, I want to store the value, and I've got to put the curly brackets around it to let it know it's a cell entry and I'll put lab T1. So that's going to grab the current temperature. And then I'll pause for one second and then end. So now I've collected my data and I can display the store. OK, 
Okay, let's keep going. Um, let's now save this data to a file. Okay, I've turned the lab off, just turned off the heaters. Now we want to write the file. Okay, I'm going to open the file in a way that you may not have seen yet, but it's F open, file open. I'm going to put the data file name there. And then I've got to tell how I want to open it. If I want to read it, if I want to append to it, if I want to write it. In this case, I want to write to the file, so I'll put a W there. Now I'm going to use the same F print F statement. We normally use that to uh, print to the screen, but now we have a file identifier. We want to write to the file. And we're going to just write a string and another string separated by a comma. And then we'll give the new line return there as well. So I'll have time and temperature. So this is going to be my header that's going to go at the top of the CSV file. And then I want to go for I to length of my store. This is going to be the number of rows in my store. Now I want to extract the two values, the date and the value. And I'll just say that's going to be equal to store. And then this notation is just a little bit confusing if you haven't seen it before. I'm going to go down through the 20 rows and I'm going to put a comma there. And then this means to get all of the colon means to get all of the columns. Okay, so all of the columns in row one, two, three, four. All right, so the colon is kind of shorthand for one to end. Okay, you could do that as well. One to end, or you could just leave it as the colon. All right, now I'm going to print FID. I'm going to print to that file identifier, and I'm going to have a string and then the number with two decimal places. This is going to be a floating point number. And I'm going to have a new line character, and I'll print out the date and the value. Okay, so that ends it. Now I just need to close my file. So I'll use file close with the file identifier, which is an integer. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to display store here. Let's go ahead and just run this. It's going to take about 20 seconds or so to run. And then we'll see the file show up. It'll show up in here. Or we can open it up with Excel. It's going to be a CSV file, a comma separated value file. We can open it up with a text editor or with Excel. Okay, so we'll just wait for that to complete. The heater is on at 70% right now. And you can see we've displayed the store. So these are all the times that it came in, hopefully one second apart. You can see this one, there was about a two seconds, maybe it was off just a little bit. Maybe some of those, I should have paused it for a little less time. Okay, um, here are the temperature values. So you can see them starting to increase. All right, and let's go look at this um, file right here. Okay, so I'm gonna come to my begin MATLAB, and it's here, data.csv. I can just open it up with Excel. And here I have the time and the temperature that I just wrote out. I could insert a plot, although we'll be doing this in Python, or uh, not Python, MATLAB or Octave later. We'll be generating plots as well in uh, MATLAB. Okay, so there's the temperature, but let's go and just look at it, not with Excel, but let's just look at it with a text editor. There you can see the format is just in text format. And it wrote the header and then it wrote uh, these different lines. All right, so that concludes uh, this tutorial on cell arrays. Let me just review it really quickly with you. To create a cell array, it's just these uh, curly brackets and then you can put things in here separated by commas. Don't forget the uh, cell string, cell str if you're in MATLAB to be able to put strings in there. And then also if you're in MATLAB, you gotta enclose any double precision numbers by curly brackets as well, letting it know that it's an entry. 
for your celery. You can add or remove uh, columns or rows to your celery just like you do with regular rows. The, the overall thing I've noticed with celery is they're just a little bit harder to work with and that comes at a cost because you know they're more flexible so you can store different types of data in those entries.